Lighting a scene using only the lights provided by 3ds Max may not always solve a difficult lighting problem. For example, a neon sign or long neon tube would pose a challenge when using it to illuminate a scene. We're going to be rendering this scene using the iRay renderer. The reason is that the iRay renderer easily and accurately handles self-illuminated objects within a scene. Click Open from the Quick Access toolbar. From the Chapter 5 directory, open the file Chapter 5 Object Lighting 01.max. The scene is a simple scene that represents the interior of a theme park ride loading and unloading room. Notice there is an S-shaped sign with a circle around it against the far left wall facing the camera. This is the object that will become the neon sign. Let's render the scene in order to see what it looks like without the neon sign turned on. Click Render Production from the main toolbar to begin rendering the scene. iRay will begin to render the frame, and immediately you will see that there are several lights that are turned off. With the lighting dimmed, it's hard to make out the glass tubes of the neon sign on the wall. We will need to modify the material in order to make them self-illuminated and illuminate the scene. If the rendering is not complete, click Cancel and stop the rendering in progress. Open the Slate Material Editor by clicking the Slate Material Editor option from the main toolbar. Once the Material Editor opens, we will need to get the neon sign material from the scene in order to edit it. Scroll the Material Map browser window to the bottom so you can see the scene materials rollout. Open it and locate the neon sign material. Click and drag the material into the View 1 workspace. Select Instance in the dialog that opens and click OK. This will cause any changes we make to the material in the editor to be reflected in the material assigned to the objects in the scene. Double click on the upper portion of the material name to open the material parameters. Make a note, if you double click on the material sample sphere, you will enlarge the sample sphere window, not open the parameters of the material. Scroll to the self illumination glow rollout and open it if it's not already open. Turn on the self-illumination by checking the self-illumination glow checkbox. You will now have access to the self-illumination parameters. In the color area, click the filter color swatch. In the color selector, set the red value to 0 0.85, the green value to 0, and the blue value to 0, and click OK to accept the values. Set the luminance to use the physical units candelas per meter squared. This setting lets us use a real-world value for the light output of the material. Change the physical unit value to 4750 and press Enter. Then, in order to illuminate the scene, we need to select Illuminate the Scene when using Final Gather in the Glow Options area. Close the Material Editor dialog. In the Render Frame window, click Render to re-render the scene. This time, you'll see that the illuminated neon sign lights up the room. 